MCP is what allows agents to take action beyond a simple chat application to other systems like accessing private databases, connecting to third-party applications, and even checking your calendar and messages. Before talking about how MCPs work, here's why MCPs matter and what problem MCP solves. Before MCPs were introduced by Anthropic, back in November 2024, we had an issue with extending an LLM beyond a simple chat application. In other words, in order to connect a chat application to external applications like private databases, help desk systems, calendars, and other backend systems, we needed to create some communication medium that would facilitate the communication between the LLM and these disparate systems. This type of limitation is called the n times n problem, where essentially it means that for every integration that you want to connect to, you need to create a different implementation for each. And MCP addresses that point exactly, where you only have to create the n integrations once, and it will practically work with every m systems. And if that sounds too good to be true, understanding how MCPs actually work might actually give you a better grasp on why this actually works so well. MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. And the key word to focus here is the last word, which is protocol. In other words, while you might look at the integration portion and say, hey, that's an application, or hey, that's written in code. While that certainly is true, you might be missing an important point. It's really the protocol side of MCP that makes it such a unique and ubiquitous tool. So in order to use the LLM to connect to other applications, one of the first things you will run into is the medium in which you communicate. In other words, let's say you want to have your LLM talk to your human resources application so that you can ask the LLM the following question. Can you help me request time off for next Friday? Now, the LLM has no clue how to communicate with their human resources application. Actually, what's worse is that LLM doesn't even know that there is such a thing as human resources application. So you'll have to somehow write up a whole prompt before writing your original prompt with something like this. You have access to use our human resources application, which is hosted on our private server on port 6000 with the IP of 192.168.0.12. If my request happens to be about a human resources application, applications, you should try to use the human resources applications before answering back. And once this draft is in your prompt, you can then append it to the subsequent request from the earlier that says, can you request a time off for next Friday? As you can see, this is starting to become a lot of work to describe and maintain. And here's where it gets worse. Even though now the LLM knows that it has access to human resources applications, it still doesn't know how to engage with the system. And the burden is put on you to once again, to describe what API endpoints are available. And not only that, you will have to describe how to actually make the call and what type of data to expect from the human resources applications. So your job now ballooned to something even more where your prompt is starting to become this massive write-up of how to actually communicate with this human resources application. And there's more. You also have to then work on the actual part where you actually make the call and exchange information between the systems. What I mean by that is that in your description, it outlines the LLM on how to actually make the API calls to the HR application to make the time off request. So the LLM might respond back to your request with the following string. And since these are just string, you have to actually take them and physically make the call to the API endpoint and facilitate the entire operation from what the LLM requested and what the API actually returned. And now you're starting to have the nightmare with the n times n problem from earlier, where repeating this type of setup for every agent for every tool is starting to become a huge problem. Thankfully, Folks from Anthropic saw this problem and proposed a protocol that allows us to write the integration layer with a high level of abstraction that makes this process completely streamlined. Also, once the MCP server code is written once, you can reuse it for other instances, which means popular apps like HubSpot or Google Drive. If someone wrote that MCP server code somewhere, you can actually reuse their implementation of it and not have to worry about implementing on your own. So here's how a typical MCP server code looks like. As you can see, the implementation here for the basic HR application is completely abstracted away. So all we have to do is write the logic that first lets the LLM know that, that there is an external MCP server called human resources application. And second, lets the LLM know what kind of action you can perform in the case requesting time off. And third, the entire operation is handled by a fast MCP instance. So you don't have to actually write the code for any operation logic and make the call yourself. 
And what's even greater about MCP is that as long as the code above is written once by someone you trust, you might not even need to write any other code yourself at all. Which means all you have to do is connect the MCP server to your LLM or chatbot, and now you have the ability to use external applications instantly. Now that we covered the theory of why MCP is needed and how they work, let's move on to the lab section to actually try to understand them ourselves. In this app, we're diving into MCP server development, where we'll be building a complete flight booking system from scratch. This is going to teach you how to create your own MCP servers using Python and FastMCP framework. The lab begins with some foundational questions about MCP architecture. In the first question, we're asked to identify the three main features exposed by an MCP server. The answer here is resources, tools, and prompts. These are the three core components that make up any MCP server. Resources provide read-only data access, tools perform actions that can modify state, and prompts offer pre-written templates that guide AI systems on how to interact with your servers effectively. Next, we have a question about implementation decisions. In this question, we're asked which of the several flight-related features should be implemented as a resources rather than tool. The correct answer is the airport codes and information database. This makes perfect sense because airport information is static, read-only data that doesn't change based on user actions. Things like booking a flight or checking in a passenger would be tools since they perform actions and modify state. Moving forward, there's a question about the fast MCP framework syntax. In this question, we're asked about the decorator used to define an MCP tool. The answer is the at sign MCP dot tool decorator. FastMCP uses these simple intuitive decorators to transform regular Python functions into MCP components that AI systems can interact with. We then explore transport layer consideration. In this question, we need to determine when to use HTTP transport instead of SCDIO. The answer is when you need remote network access. SCDIO is perfect for local communication between processes on the same machine, but HTTP transport enables your MCP server to be accessed over a network which is crucial for production deployments. Next, we get into the practical setup. The lab introduces UV, which is a modern Python package manager written in Rust. UV is specifically recommended by MCP documentation because it's incredibly fast, 10 to 100 times faster than PIP for dependency resolution. It handles your entire Python project lifecycle, including dependencies, virtual environments, and even Python version management, all through one single unified tool. Time for the hands-on portion. In the first configuration task, we're asked to set up our MCP project using UV. We need to navigate to the home directory, create a new project called Flight Booking Server using UV in it, then add the MCP package with CLI tools. The key command here is UV add quote MCP bracket CLI close bracket and end quote, which tells both the MCP SDK and essential development tools like the MCP inspector. The next task gets us into actual MCP development. We're asked to create an MCP resource by adding the correct decorator to a get airport function. The important detail here is that resources require proper URI schemes, so we need to use at symbol mcp.resource with the URI file colon slash slash airports. This exposes our airport data as a read-only resource that AI systems can query. Following that, we need to move on to creating MCP tools. In this task, we need to decorate the search flights and create booking functions with the at symbol mcp.tooldecorator. These functions perform actions, searching for available flights and creating actual bookings, which is exactly what tools are designed for in MCP architecture. We then implement MCP prompts. In this question, we're decorating find best flights and handle disruption functions with at sign mcp.prompt. These prompts provide AI systems with templates and guidelines on how to optimally interact with our flight booking server, helping them understand context and best practices for different scenarios like finding budget-friendly flights or handling flight disruptions. Take a moment to explore the root code configuration section yourself. The lab has automatically set up root code with API credentials using something called the code key profile. This profile contains all the necessary OpenAI compatible API settings and connects to the model called DeepSeek Chat for testing your MCP server. The final configuration step involves connecting your MCP server to RuCode. You'll need to click on the MCP server section in RuCode, edit the project MCP configuration, and add a JSON configuration that tells RuCode how to start your flight booking server. The configuration specifies using UV to run your Python server file from the correct working directory. 
Once everything is configured, you can test your server by asking RuCode to perform various flight-related tasks like searching for flights from, from LAX to JFK, getting airport information, or booking flights for passengers. The AI Assistant will use your MCP server's resources, tools, and prompts to fulfill these requests. This lab really brings together all the components of MCP server development. You've learned how to structure an MCP server with these three core components, use the FastMCP framework for a proper decorator, set up a modern Python development environment with UV, and integrate your server with an AI Assistant through RuCode. The patterns you've learned here apply to building any type of MCP server, whether it's for e-commerce, data analysis, or system administration. Take some time to experiment with the final setup and explore how your MCP server responds to different requests through RuCode. This hands-on experience will solidify your understanding of how MCP servers bridge the gap between AI systems and real-world functionality.